are just wondering where we are. We're looking at the index of cognitive law, which you can now get to from the homepage of one one heavenorg So what I want to get to first is the question of mind influence. Article 125, mind influence. I'm going to go through some of these because I think this is an area of in incredible importance. So mind influence. Mind influence is the deliberate use of certain properties and methods concerning the influence of mind to affect, manipulate, and change the mind of one or more higher order life forms directly or indirectly to achieve some relatively beneficial or detrimental result to the intended targets. Now that's a fairly long-winded description, and for some of you it might seem, well, how could mind influence be positive? And I just remind you that in life, it comes that cognitive trauma uh, can occur and one of the most common forms of cognitive trauma is the death of your mother or your father in early age and indeed people who have experienced a, uh, an assault or a sexual abuse as a child. Now this kind of cognitive trauma may not appear, may not manifest itself until one is in old age. In fact, many people don't really start to address some of the abuse that they experienced as a young child until they're in their middle age. And when they're at that stage, it's not adequate to simply say, well, take some pharmaceuticals, there's nothing we can do. There are techniques in mind influence that can be used for positive purpose. What we want to do here is make clear what are these techniques and how are they used for good or for bad. Now I mentioned cognitive trauma, so I'm going to uh, flick around a couple of things here. I'm going to ask you now to quickly go to uh, a link uh, that is the link of biological malfunction 106. Biological malfunction, and I'm going to look for uh, where are we? A, I'm looking to see if I've got it here. In fact, it's not 106, I'm sorry. Here you go, this is live. <laughs> it is 108, cognitive malfunction. And what we're looking for is cognitive trauma. In fact, I, now I know why I can't find it. I'm looking for trauma. Okay, so I'm sorry. I've asked you to go to two and it wasn't the ones I wanted. I apologize. It is Article 107, Traumatic Malfunction. I finally found it, Traumatic Malfunction. So if you go to Article 107 and you look at Canon 1246, we define what we mean by cognitive trauma. And I want to explain this because this is something that if you've gone through court you've been sexually abused, if you've been crushed by the IRS or some tax office, then this is exactly the process of cognitive trauma. So we say here there exists five common elements when cognitive trauma, also known as psychological trauma, is experienced. We call that deception, violation, confusion, rejection and disillusion. Deception or betrayal is to be tricked into a state of confidence only to be treated and betrayed at the weakest points. If you think about it, most people believe their government serves them. Most people believe in society that honours them. Most people believe that laws are made to protect society. So when they encounter the sharp teeth of society, when they find the abusing priest, when they find the lying judge, it is an act of betrayal. And that is the first step of cognitive trauma. Number two, violation. Violation is a physical violation, incarceration, kidnapping, threat with violence, dishonor or humiliation, often without any outward physical sign or injury. What is one of the most potent weapons that the system does? It writes the most threatening letters. If people could only share the kind of threatening letters they receive from the tax office. The tax office has no problems writing and it writes these all the time. 
that if you do not pay all the money in full, we will come and take everything from you. They literally say that over and over. The courts say, if you don't pay this fine, we will put you in prison. This is threats. This is duress in writing. That's how arrogant they are. They are perfectly happy writing documentary, evidential threats, extreme threats, cognitive trauma to get their way. And three, confusion. Confusion is a sense of shame, guilt, mistrust and uncertainty resulting from the violation experienced by some. Even if you know the system, when it happens to you, when you experience it, it does cause doubt. It does cause mistrust. It does cause uncertainty, no matter who you are. Four, rejection. It's a sense of isolation, anger, depression, and low self-worth experienced through the mistrust, humiliation, and guilt of the process that's taken place to you, the violation that's taken place to you. And five, what they want you to feel, where they want you to be. Number five, disillusion. It's a sense of complete loss of hope, confidence, bravery, causing the victim to be more compliant in any future traumatic event. Now that is also the purpose of extreme negative mind influence or what we call mind terror. So I want to go back to what we were looking at before and moving forward back to article 125, mind influence. Again, thank you for the fact that we're jumping back and forth, but it's important because I need to be able to share this. So we're back to Article 125 and Canon 1334. When you look at Canon 1334 under Article 125, you see the words mind control. We say here is mind control, also known as thought control, is the elaborate mind virus founded on the false belief that free will can be temporarily or permanently compromised. Now, as we said before, we said this last week, it is absolute rubbish. Mind control does not exist other than a mind virus. They use it as a term in the hope you believe it, it works. The stories of the monarch programs, I'm sure, have a basis of truth. I'm sure the CIA did, in fact, do all the horrible tortures and experiments. But the greatest effect of the Monarch program, the greatest effect of these programs, is to convince you that they can control your mind. Why? Because if they can get you to believe that mind control is possible, then you have, in fact, agreed to give up your concept of free will. And that's what they want. They want you to, and they want to trick you into believing that you give up your free will. And what is free will? Free will is saying, I will not go quietly into the night. I will not compliantly walk into a box car. I will not lay down and have my head chopped off without struggling. I will not be like those terrible, horrible, horrible movies by Hollywood, a public notice that shows the way that people willingly meekly, compliantly walked to their own death, consented to their own murder. I will not do that. I hope you will not do that either. We will not give up our free will. And that is exactly what's happening around the world. There are people, in particularly places like Syria, who have said, I am prepared to give up my life standing as a protester unarmed against tyranny than to live another more day on my knees. And that power changes the world and is changing the world. It's a mind influence. Well, there's a lot to cover there and I'll, I'll, I hope you go through and have a look at some of those other areas. But in the time uh, that is remaining, I want to cover a couple of areas. I want to cover... If we go down to another two in the same section, the article 130, Mind Terror, and then I'm going to talk about psychology, and then I'm going to talk about the first system of mind influence, the first system of the matrix. 
So instead of mind control, we describe mind terror. And here in Canon 1354, we say mind terror, also known as brainwashing, is a word describing systematic, extreme, negative mind influence to manipulate the minds of subjects to achieve the desires of the manipulators. What you see there is there are three types. Ritual mind terror, political mind terror, and sexual mind terror. Ritual mind terror is the kind of mind terror I was talking about in World War II where the rabbi tricked their own flock to go meekly. They tricked them. And the deception was so great, the horror was so great that it caused that disillusionment that we spoke of with cognitive trauma. The reason so many of those people were in that state was that they were still in a state of shock at the complete and total perfidy of their rabbi. This is their, their leader, their religious leader, surrendering them to the Nazis. Could you imagine what that would have done to you? And those 80 or 1,000 so rabbi being given new identities off to America and are then becoming the elite that we speak of. It must have been an incredible cognitive trauma that these people put in. But ritual mind terror is not about uh, keeping people alive. It's about convincing that mind, even in death, that they are under control of the operator. If you wonder why the veil around the Vatican has lifted and the veil around Washington has lifted and the veil around all these kinds of evil is lifting or it has lifted, it's that the energy that was around that, that the souls that believed they were still in perpetual servitude to this kind of madness have now transitioned, that the game is up on this plane and the other plane. The game is up and, and minds, whether they are still in the body or have moved on, realize that this is all kind of mind influence. It is tricks, even if these people were murdered and, and they were murdered in such horrible ways. So I hope you're going to look at that section on mind terror to see the extremities of it and how they deal with it to make clear on exactly how the system operates because the system depends on mind terror to stay in power. It needs it. Now, in the last few minutes available, and I'm going to run a little bit over time, I hope that's okay, I want to just cover a couple of words, a couple of areas under mind influence system. And I'm going to go to Article 132 with the time. So Article 132, mind influence system, Canon 1368. A mind influence system is a comprehensive model and system designed to affect, manipulate and change the mind of an entire population of homo sapiens to achieve some relatively beneficial or detrimental result for the intended target population. And the world's first mind influence system that eventually replaced physical slavery with voluntary slavery, this is Canon 1369, was formed by the Jesuits and Khazar Magyar elite nobles in the 16th century and was called Common Law and Democracy, first tested in England and then replicated throughout most of the world. Well, democracy, how could democracy be part of a mind influence system? Well, Canon 1370, the word democracy, first created in the 16th century, is derived from two Latin words. If you look at any book, they say it's from Greek. It's not Greek, <laughs> it's Latin. And the two words are demo, meaning to take away, subtract, and kratos, meaning ribs, framework, fasces, the bundles of sticks carried by Roman legions to signify Roman law and the rights of Roman citizens. That's where the word kratos comes from. Kratos uh, is the word to describe the fasces. So hence, the true and original meaning of democracy, this is the original meaning, is to take away, subtract Roman law and rights through fascism. So, 1371, by its true and original meaning, democracy as the name for the first mind influence system, and it was, that's its first thing, is equivalent to Roman fascism. That's what it means. 
Hence, and if you don't believe 